Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Now we all know how the standard strategies go in Age of Empires 2 with all the archers and all the scouts going into knights and crossbows, but from time to time it's really fun to mix it up and surprise our opponents, try to catch them off guard with an out of the box strategy. In this video we're going to be talking about the top 5 best out of the box strategies in the game starting off with number 5. All right, number five, we've got the Goth Infinite Militia Rush. Now, we all know that it's possible to go for a few militias in the Dark Age. And of course, with Goth, you do get that small discount as well. But to surprise our opponent, what we can go for is a ton of militias in Dark Age. I'm talking like one barracks, then two barracks, even going up to three barracks, sending villages forward, walling in the resources, and massing 20, 30 militia at, of course, that Goth discount, taking out their mill, taking out their houses, taking out their lumber camps, harassing their villagers, and preventing them from kind of doing anything that they want to go for. If they go for a fast feudal age, we can easily try to kill their barracks and their stable with the amount of militia we're going to be producing. It's a really strong strategy if you catch your opponent off guard, and it's one that only really gets countered if they go for archers in the early game in an early feudal age, and if they try to wall up a little bit to mitigate the damage. But if they fail on those two fronts, then the goth infinite militia is a really fun way to catch your opponent off guard super early on in the game. All right, so moving on to number four, we've got the Berber Villager Rush. Now, this is something that's been around for a long time, but has been recently made popular and is kind of running rampant on the ladder, I think, from what I've seen here and there. And the idea of it is making use of the fact that Berber Villagers move 10% faster. And that's just such a massive bonus. You're able to chase down their Villagers and also run back your low HP Vills. So you, like, in theory, never losing your Villagers and also able to kill their Villagers very effectively in the early game. The best way to do this, in my opinion, is to go super early with the Villagers kind of like around villager eight nine already start sending villagers forward and start to harass them and then commit you know three four five villagers forward as many as you need as long as you're able to find damage hit their buildings kill their houses kill their mills and, and even fight their villagers and as soon as your villas go lower on hp you can easily send them back to the town center and heal them up or put them right back to work so it's a really effective way to harass your opponent start killing their boar start killing their deer and fighting their villagers without really investing too much into any military you're just using the villagers that you have made already. So it's a fun strategy and it's a good way to catch up on off guard with the Berbers. Hopping into number three now, we've got a really fun strategy, kind of named after Tato. It's called the Tati Rush. He's kind of the one that kind of made it popular. But of course, it is one of those strategies that's been around for a long time as well. It's the Saracens Market All-In Feudal Age Ranges. We even, in some cases, sacrifice villager production. All you have to do is send all your bills to gold, and gold and wood, that is, make a market, make two or three ranges, get fletching, and that's all you need. The reason why this works so well is the Saracen Market's really strong. You get to mine gold and stone, sell that, buy up whatever you need. Need, and then use the arches that you have on the field to put pressure on your opponent. There's also one extra thing that's really strong about the Saracen all in ranges is the fact that your archers get a bonus damage against buildings. This might seem negligible at first, but it's actually very strong, especially when you have a big mass of archers. You're able to take down houses, you're able to take down palisade walls extremely quickly. And if you give it some time, you can even kill production buildings like archery ranges and stables from your opponent. It's a great way to surprise your opponent in the early game with an all in feudal age rush with the Saracens, whereas they might think that you're just going to go for a standard one or two ranges, you go for like three or four ranges nice and early with that big power spike from the Saracens. All right, moving on to number two now, we've got a really fun surprise strategy with a civilization that isn't really known for its rushing potential, and that is the Malay. Now, most people with Malay tend to kind of play a slower paced game, but there is one thing that the Malay can do better than any other civilization, and it's to make those really cheap elephants. In early Castle Age, it's very hard to afford elephants with a generic civilization like Vietnamese, for example, but Malay getting that massive discount lets you make two or even three stable elephants from early Castle Age from the get-go. Obviously, you don't have the best upgrades on those elephants, but it doesn't matter in early castleage. If you have 15 elephants and you're charging at your opponent's town center, you're going to be able to melt that super quickly. And it's really hard to react to elephants if you're not prepared to deal with a rush. The only option that you really have is like monks. Even going pikemen is going to be hard and Malay elephants trade pretty well against only a few pikemen. So really strong rush in my opinion. And the best part about this or the way to make this work is making it a surprise strategy. If your opponent can see it coming, it's really not that strong. But if they think you're going to be booming at home, they think you're going to be playing economy or archers or whatever it might be and you surprise them with elephants then it's going to be a crazy push and a crazy strategy bonus points if you make the stables forward near your opponent's base so your elephants don't have to walk all the way across the map to get there 
All right, guys, before I talk about number one, which is personally my favorite strategy on this list and one that I think has the most potential to work in, you know, even competitive games, I will talk about an honorable mention and it's one that we all know and hate and it's the TC drop, the Town Center drop in Dark Age, otherwise known as the Town Center douche. It's really annoying to play against and it's really quite easy to do as well. Basically, all you have to know about this is that you delete your Town Center in the early game in Dark Age and rebuild it close to your opponent's Town Center and you try to kill their Town Center with your own. And this only works with select civilization, the best civilization being Persians because your town center has double the HP at 4,800. And so they don't even have the chance to fight back and kill your town center. They just have to run in which you start to net yourself some advantage. This isn't a strategy that will win you games every single time. Your opponent has to panic and make incorrect choices for you to win with the douche. Otherwise you should lose every time you try and do it if they play perfectly. But that being said, it's very hard for your opponent to play perfectly when you're applying so much pressure in the early game. And so the douche remains as one of the cheesiest strategies strategies and one of the best out of the box strategies in Age of Empires 2 and it's why it makes the honorable mention on this list. All right, finally, the moment we've all been waiting for, guys. Number one on the list, my personal favorite, the full wall into sneaky ranges. And in my opinion, the best civilization for this is going to be basically any archer civ, but I like personally the Khmer because the Khmer is a civilization that is extremely strong behind full walls. And generally speaking, your opponent will just expect you to boom. Also, you don't need to make a barracks with Khmer, so you're naturally saving a lot of wood and your opponent will not scout any barracks because you're not making one. And so they will automatically assume you're playing a slow paced game. But then if you go ahead and sneak one villager and make two archery ranges behind your opponent's base, you can easily surprise him with like eight or 10 archers with fletching right on his wood line, right on his gold when he's least expecting it. And while he's thinking you're booming, you're massing up a really strong field age army and you can take out a ton of villagers because he's not gonna have the military or the defenses ready to defend such a push. One of my favorite strategies to do with Khmer, if I'm looking to go for like some sort of like a bit of cheese or a bit of an early game out of the box strategy, I almost always opt for this one just because I feel like it's super Super powerful and extremely hard to expect as well. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my top five out of the box strategies for Age of Empires 2. Let me know if there's some really strong strategies that I missed. I might do a follow up video if there's enough strategies that you guys mentioned that are fun out of the box strategies. We all love to play meta and try to improve at the game, but everyone from time to time likes to kick back and go for a surprise rush and even just catch their friends off guard in a friendly game as well with one of these strategies. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace. Well played. Uh, I completely underestimated that. Man, that was embarrassing.